In this video, we'll look at 2015 H2 Physics Paper 2 Question 1. So this is question 1. From question 1, you can see that we have a spring of length L with one end of the spring having a mass M that's hung on it. Figure 1.2 shows the graph of mass M with length L for different masses loaded onto the spring. With that, we can now look at the questions asked. Before you start any question, it is good for you to skim through all the parts quickly. This will let you have an idea what are the questions said and what should be the concepts you should be focusing on. So skimming through the parts, you will see that this is a question on energy with different forms of energy interacting with each other. There are some qualitative parts for you to describe the energy changes and quantitative parts in which you are supposed to link the concepts on energy with motion of the object. Viewing the questions in totality will allow us to preempt the questions and try to link the parts together. We can now focus on part A. Let us read the question, pick out the keys and brainstorm a little before delving into the question. In part A, we are asked to find the energy stored in the spring when the spring has a length of 70 cm. We first focus on what is energy stored in the spring. We know this is the elastic potential energy of the spring. In general, there are two ways to find elastic potential energy. First, we can find elastic potential energy from area under a force versus extension graph. Secondly, if the spring obey Hooke's law, we can then calculate EPE using half kx squared or half fx where x is the extension. For this question, we shall use all the methods to illustrate how to determine this energy stored. This will be explained shortly. Let us first look at the first method of solving elastic potential energy. In this first method, we know that elastic potential energy is the area under a force versus extension graph. However, when we look at the graph given in figure 1.2, we see that this is a graph of M versus L. Hence, we need to first link this graph to F versus X graph before we can solve the question. To do that, we can look at figure 1.1. We note that M is the mass that's hung on the spring. The force that is extending the spring is therefore M times G. Relating it back to the graph, if we want to find F, we just have to take each value of M and multiply it by G to get the loading force extending the spring. Note that because we have only just multiplied each m by a constant of g, the shape of the f versus l graph should look like the shape of a m versus l graph. Hence, we see that the elastic potential energy can be expressed as area under the m versus x graph times g. Now, let us look at the length l. l is the total length of the spring when a mass m is hung on it. We know that extension is just the length of the spring minus the unextended length of the spring, L0. So, are we able to find the unextended length from the graph? Yes, we can. That corresponds to the point when no mass is hung, when M is equal to 0. From the graph, we see that when M is equal to 0, L is equal to 40 cm. Hence, 40 cm is the original unextended length of the spring. If we were to deduct this 40 cm from each value of L, the horizontal axis becomes the extension axis. Note that in this process, it is just a shift of the L value by a fixed amount, and there would not be any change in the shape of the graph as well. EPE can now be written as area under the ML graph times G. We have just completed linking the FX graph to the ML graph, so all that leaves us to do is to read off the values from the graph to finish the question. Note that area under the ML graph when L equals to 70 cm is the area of this triangle. Using area equals to half times base times height, we have half times 70 minus 40 cm converted to meters. The value of M when L is 70 cm is 450 grams multiplied by G which is 9.81. Since we want to express the final answer in joules, 
we need to convert all the terms to SI units. Putting it into the calculator, we will have 0.662 joules for the answer. This is the first method to compute the elastic potential energy. We will now repeat part A using the second method. Note that in the second method, the equations can only be used if the spring obey Hooke's law. Let us first look at how the graph tells us that the spring obeys Hooke's law. Earlier in method 1, we saw that the force of extension F of the spring is given by mg. And if we were to multiply each value of m by g, we would be able to transform the m values to f. Similarly, we also saw that if we were to subtract the length of the spring 40 cm from each of the values on the horizontal axis, the horizontal axis can transform to x. Hence, a graph of force versus extension should yield a straight line graph. Furthermore, at L equals to 40 cm, x is equals to 0. This means f is proportional to x and the spring obeys Hooke's law. Since the spring obeys Hooke's law, the elastic potential energy is given by half kx squared. Our task simplifies to finding the spring constant k and the extension x when L is equals to 70 cm. To find spring constant k, we can use back any set of ML values from the graph. Since we are going to find the extension when L is equal to 70 cm, we will choose to use the value of M there. Now, K is equal to F over X, which is MG over X. At L equals to 70 cm, we have X equals to 70 minus 40, which is 30 cm. At that value, the value of M is 450 grams. Substituting these into the equation and converting into SI units, we will get the spring constant to be 14.715 Newton per meter. We can now substitute this back into the EPE equation together with the corresponding extension value of 30 cm and you should be able to yield the answer 0.662 joules. Lastly, we have come to our final method. In this method, we are going to find EPE using half kx. Recall, this method only works if we know that our spring obeys Hooke's law. We have noted earlier that F is equal to mg, and hence, elastic potential energy is equal to half mgx. At L equals to 70 cm, m is 450 grams, and x is equal to 70 minus 40, which is 30 centimeters. Substituting these values and converting into SI units will yield elastic potential energy to be 0.662 joules. Above are the few methods for solving part A. Now let us move to part B. As before, we will quickly read through part B to pick up the keys to solving this. In part B, we are asked to focus on a particular case where M equals to 300 grams. It is initially held at rest with a length L of 40 cm. For part 1, we are asked to state the energy changes in the mass spring system as the mass falls to its lowest position from its point of release. Hence, we see that this is a qualitative question that requires us to describe energy changes between two points of motion. To do this type of question, where you are asked to describe energy changes, it is best first to have a visualization of the process. Secondly, you will need to identify all the energies involved at each stage before you write the answer. Let us now start with the visualizing process. To do so, we make sketches of the points of interest. Initially, the mass is released from rest at a length of 40 cm. As the spring extends, the speed increases and the tension in the spring starts to increase. It increases to the point where T is equal to mg, that is the point where the speed will be maximum. Furthermore, if we look back at figure 1.2, we note that 
For a mass of 300 grams, the length of the spring is 60 centimeters. This is therefore the equilibrium position of the system. After the mass moves past the equilibrium position, it will then move towards its lowest point. As the spring moves towards the lowest point, the tension in the spring starts to grow and the tension becomes increasingly larger than mg. In the process, the speed decreases to the point where the mass becomes instantaneously at rest, after which the mass will move up again. We are now done with visualizing the process. The next part of the plan is to identify the energies involved in the process so that we can describe it. So what are the energies involved in this process? In energy questions, we should always start off looking at the total energy of the system and see if the total energy will remain constant. In this case, there is no indication that dissipative forces are present. Hence, we can assume that total energy remains constant. This is the first energy we need to talk about. As the mass moves, it changes in height. So, the other energy we should put in is the gravitational potential energy. Other energies to write about includes elastic potential energy as the spring extends and kinetic energy as the speed changes. We can now further describe how each of these energy changes. Let's look at GPE first. We see the mass is highest at its initial position and lowest at its final position. Hence, GPE is maximum initially. It decreases as it moves towards the lowest position where GPE becomes minimum. This will be the three key points that needs to be reflected in your answer for the description of the energy changes for GPE. We repeat the same analysis for EPE for elastic potential energy, we start off at L equals to 40 centimeters. Recall, this is the unextended length of the spring. Hence, elastic potential energy at that point is zero. As it extends, the spring's extension increases, so elastic potential energy increases. This will continue till it is at its lowest point where extension is maximum. Hence, elastic potential energy is maximum there as well. Again, these are the three critical points that should be reflected in the answer. Lastly, we look at kinetic energy. For kinetic energy, we look at speed of the system. From our analysis earlier, we see that the system starts off from rest. Hence, kinetic energy is zero. Then, it increases in speed as it moves towards equilibrium. At equilibrium, V is maximum and hence, kinetic energy is maximum there. After passing through equilibrium, the speed starts to decrease. Hence, kinetic energy will decrease till the system comes to an instantaneous rest at its lowest point, kinetic energy also becomes zero there. Again, these are the few points we will need to include in the description. Note that this is a qualitative question, hence you should give your answer in continuous prose. What is presented here are only the points that need to be included in your answer. You can also choose to present your answer in terms of energy changes as the mass moves from one stage of motion to another stage of motion. However, the points of how each type of energy will change should still be included. Next, we will look at B part 2. In part 2, you are asked to use the answer in A, which is the elastic potential energy at L equals to 70 cm, to calculate the speed of the mass when the spring has extended by 30 cm from its point of release. Again, before we jump in to do the question, we should always quickly dissect the question and strategize a little. So, this is a calculate question and hence a quantitative question. The aim of the question is to find V and we are given a clue to use the answer in A. 
In general, for mechanics question, there are two approaches to solve for motion. The first approach is a force approach in which using a free body diagram, we will identify all the forces acting on the body, find the net force, look for the acceleration using Newton's second law, and then use equations of motion to look for the values. The second approach is an energy approach in which we will solve for the physical quantities using conservation of energy. If we look back at this question, we see that throughout the motion, the spring force changes, and hence the net force and acceleration is not constant. We therefore cannot use the first approach. We should be using the energy approach to do the question. The other trick whenever we are stuck in a question is to remember that usually examiners are very kind and will lead you through the question. Since the previous part was on energy and you are asked to use back the answer in A, which is elastic potential energy, this is likely an energy question. So try to look back when you are stuck or look for hints in the question. We will now apply conservation of energy to solve the problem. To apply conservation of energy, we will need two points in the motion. In this case, you are asked to focus on the point of release and after the spring has extended by 30 cm. Before writing any equation, we should first draw a diagram. So initially, the spring was at rest and its length is 40 cm. Finally, the spring has extended by 30 cm, that is L is equal to 70 cm, and we want to know what is the speed at that time. What else do we know? We are asked to use our answer in A. This is the elastic potential energy when L equals to 70 cm. Are we ready to solve the question? No. To solve conservation of energy questions, we need to do one more step. We need to identify all the energy changes that takes place between the two points of the motion. So we know that GPE initially is maximum, elastic potential energy is zero, and since V is equal to zero, kinetic energy is also zero. At L equals to 70 cm, GPE has decreased, there is kinetic energy, this is the term that we want as we want the speed. With all the energies identified, we can now apply conservation of energy to the question. We note that there is a decrease in gravitational potential energy while the elastic potential energy and kinetic energy has increased. Hence, by conservation of energy, since total energy is constant, the decrease in GPE must be equal to the increase in kinetic energy and the increase in elastic potential energy of the system. The decrease in gravitational potential energy can be written as mg delta L, increase in kinetic energy, half mv squared, and we're going to leave the increase in EPE as delta EPE. Rearranging the equation, since we are interested in v, I'll make v squared the subject of the formula, and simplifying, we can now plug in all the values into the equation, and converting the values into SI units, you should be able to get the answer as 1.21 meter per second. We now repeat the same strategy for B part 3. In this case, we want to calculate the distance, which we are going to call X, fallen by the mass from its point of release before it first comes to rest. Again, we draw a diagram for the scenario and identify the energies. The first point of interest is at its point of release, which is at L equals to 40 centimeters. The second point of interest is at the point where it first comes to rest at the lowest point of its motion. In terms of energy for each point, we have at L equals to 40 centimeters, GPE maximum, elastic potential energy zero because the spring is initially unextended and kinetic energy zero. 
at the lowest point, we have elastic potential energy maximum, GPE minimum, and kinetic energy zero. Therefore, from here, we see no change in the kinetic energy of the system in the process, and the only changes are with GPE and EPE. So by conservation of energy, the decrease in gravitational potential energy equals to the increase in elastic potential energy. And we have decrease in GPE as mgx and increase in elastic potential energy as half kx squared. We are interested in x, so we'll make x the subject of the equation. Earlier in A, we have already determined k to be 14.715. Hence, we can put in all the values and the answer should yield 0.400 meters. This brings us to the end of question 1.